So a new finder, a new widget, and some other new features, all in the beta version of Elemental and Elemental Pro. So in this video, I'm just gonna go through what these new enhancements and new features are, and give you an update on what you can expect when this is released to the public. So if you've been working with Elementor or Elementor Pro for quite some time, you'll know with all these new features have been rolling out, the interface is starting to get a little cluttered and anything we can do to get a much better user experience for us, the developers and designers, is a good thing. So with that, we've got the new Finder option. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna demonstrate what that actually does in this first part of the video, but stick around because there are several other different new things we're gonna take a look at throughout this video. Well, my name is Paul C. This is WP Touch, the channel where we create beautiful WordPress websites. If this is your first time on the channel, please consider subscribing and clicking that bell icon below to be notified every time new content is added. Okay, so let's just jump over into Elementor and let's take a look at this new Finder in action. So the new Finder in Elementor and Elementor Pro is something that you can use throughout your entire site, whether you're in the dashboard, whether you're in the editor itself, or the front end of the site, it'll work exactly the same. Now, there are two ways of accessing this. If you're in the dashboard itself and not in the editor, the only way you can access it currently is by con pressing Control or Command and E. If you're inside the Elemental Editor itself, then you have an alternative option by simply coming to the hamburger menu in the top left-hand corner, click, and you can see we have the option there for Finder, and that'll open up directly. So it's very easy to access, and like I say, it's a global site-wide tool. So now we can start typing things in this. Let's just say, for example, we want to create a new post, or we can type in post, and you can see that will go through now and give us a couple of options. We can edit anything that matches the criteria. We can also go through then and do things like add new post, page, template, and so on. Now there are still a couple of little quirks in here. It doesn't necessarily find everything the way you'd expect, but this is a beta version. So don't worry too much about it. Now what happens is, let's just say for example, we want to edit a template that we already have. So let's just close that down and I'll type in header. You can see it pulls up my template, so we can generally go into that section of the site. We can go into any page or post that match that criteria. In this example, I'm looking for the header new template and header. If I want to preview that particular post, page, or template, I can simply click on the eye icon on the right-hand side. That'll open up a new tab and take me in so I can preview exactly what I'm looking at. So there's the header. Close that down. If I want to actually edit it, I can simply click on the name and that'll open up a new tab, take me straight into the Elemental Editor, and I'm ready to start editing that particular template, page, or post. So it's very, very quick. Keeps the original page or post or whatever you're working on open in the background, so we've got a separate tab for that. I can now come in, make my edits and so on, save that, close that tab down, and I'm ready to carry on working without the need to jump back into the dashboard and go through the whole process of actually finding out where all the different elements are that I want to edit, tweak, adjust, and add to, and so on. So let's just say that I want to create a new post. Simply type in post, like we did previously, and we'll say add new post, and again, it'll open up a new tab, open up the editor, and I'm ready to start working. So it's a great way of creating our content without, like I say, that need to keep jumping back and forth into the dashboard itself. So pretty cool, I quite like that. Now, if you're thinking that anybody would have access to this once they know the keyboard shortcut, don't worry, only people with admin level access will be able to adjust and use this finder. So you do have a level of security added to using this particular function. And that's pretty much how the finder works. It's a pretty great start. I still think there are a few things that need to be tweaked on there, but like I say, this is still a beta version. Now, before we close the finder down, and speaking of things like keyboard shortcuts, if you want to access all the keyboard shortcuts that are applicable to the finder and Elementor itself, you can simply use the control or command and the question mark key, and that'll open up the keyboard shortcuts window and tell you what all the different keyboard shortcuts to do the various different simple things throughout Elementor will give you. So again, one of those things, it's quite a nice simple way of having this cheat sheet pop up as and when you need it. So there we go, that's the new Finder option inside Elementor. It's a great way of speeding up your process of being able to jump off and edit other pages without the need to go back to the dashboard and then go in and find those pages itself or posts or any template. So I think that's a really cool addition and something that's gonna speed up your development process. So when it comes to choosing fonts, this can be a little bit time consuming, especially if you don't really know which font you want to use. So the new addition we have is a preview option when you choose the fonts from the drop down list. Now this is something that if you ever use the Adobe Creative Suite, you'll probably be really used to this. As you look at that drop down list of available fonts on your system, or in this case, in the Google Fonts Library, you will see a preview of what that font looks like. So it makes choosing the right font considerably quicker and considerably easier. 
So being able to visually see what font you're picking inside the editor in Elementor is really going to speed up your design process. It's easy to do anything that uses text, any way you can style this text, we now have the option to access that. So I've got the heading section in here, I'm going to come out to the Styles tab and we're going to come down to the Typography section. Nothing has changed in there if you look at it, but if we come down to the, the family for the text, we can click on there and you can see now it starts to show us just the fonts. If we start to scroll through, give it a split second and you'll see it now starts to load in those Google fonts so we can get a visual representation of what those fonts are going to look like. Now it does take a couple of seconds for all these to start loading in as you go through, or a second. Obviously it's going to be dependent upon the speed of your internet connection, so if you're on a slow connection, this might not be quite so good for you. However, it's still a great way to visually see exactly what font you're going to choose. So if we choose this one, we can see exactly what we're going to get. It now shows us the visual representation in the actual font family drop-down, even when it's just showing the font that's currently selected. So again, that's one of those things that's a really cool time saver. Something I would like to see in the future, the kind of thing you can do with the Adobe CS Suite is you can enlarge these particular preview windows or these preview options of the fonts. It's something that if you're on a higher resolution like a 4K screen or you just don't have particularly great eyesight or font is very small or thin, it can be quite difficult to see what it looks like. So the ability to make that slightly larger, maybe two or three different size options so we can have a small, medium and large, that would be something I'd love to see in a future iteration of this just so it makes it much easier on higher resolution, larger screens. But other than that, I think it's a great addition to speeding up the process of choosing and viewing your fonts. So the final thing I want to cover is the new widget that's been added in, and that's the star rating widget. Now this is one of those things that if you want to add a one through five star rating to your website, you can add this into it. So it's quite a cool little widget doesn't have a massive amount of use, I think, for a lot of people, but it's still good to see it there. But in my opinion, there is one trick that's being missed with this. It isn't dynamic. Now, this is something that if you're creating templates or you're creating a website that wants some kind of ranking or rating system, the ability to have dynamic information linked through to the star rating, in my opinion, is invaluable and something that really needs to be added into it. So hopefully when this is actually released to the full version or in a very recent or very new update, we'll see that added into it to give us the ability to link this through to our custom post types and our database. But other than that, let's just jump over to WordPress and take a look at how we use this star rating inside Elementor. So the new star rating is available or will be available in the normal default version of Elementor. It's not a pro-only feature, which is pretty cool. So let's take a look at how these work. So we've got the star rating widget. We'll drop that into our design so we can add our star rating in there. And you can see we've got some simple options on the left-hand side. We've got the actual rating itself. So let's just say we want to set this to be a four-star rating. Now, unfortunately, you can see there's a bit of a weird glitch on here. We've got this extra star underneath, but it's just a visual quirk. And like I say, this is still a beta version. So we're going to see things like this until they get picked up ready for final release. So don't worry about that. We then got the option for choosing the star style. We can see we've got font awesome or we've got Unicode. We can choose the unmarked and the marked style or the outline style. So we've got a cho choice of options on how we want our stars to be displayed. We've got alignment, we can drop a label in there, so we can just say we put rating in before that, for example, and you can see now it says, it puts that, it prepends that actual four star rating with that particular text. So all pretty self-explanatory, nothing particularly complex there. If we jump over to the style, you can see we can choose the typography. We can come in and then choose the star style. So if you want to adjust the size on those, we can set those to whatever kind of fits in with our design. We can adjust the spacing between each one of those stars to make sure everything looks the way we want change the colors, all those kinds of cool things, all the things you'd expect, and we can choose the unmarked color as well. So we want that to be, for example, a darker color. We can do that, whatever we want with it. So it's very, very easy, very straightforward. So let's just update that page, and once we've done that, we'll preview it, and what you'll see is that even though you've got this weird little star discrepancy, it doesn't show up on the front end of the site. So we preview the change, it just shows up the star rating as we'd expect it to. So pretty cool, pretty easy, and very, very straightforward to utilize inside Elementor itself. So there we go, that's what I wanted to cover in this video, just to demonstrate some of these new features that are coming out in the forthcoming version of Elemental and Elemental Pro. What do you think of these enhancements to the interface? Do you think they're gonna be a game changer, make your productivity just that little bit better, a bit more streamlined? Do you think they're gonna save you much time? Or do you think it's something that really is missing the mark and there are already some third-party plugins that have done this kind of thing and done it better? I'd love to get your feedback on this. Pop those comments in the comment section below. Let's have a conversation. Speak of the comment section, if you enjoyed the video, Video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down, but let me know in that comment section why you didn't enjoy the video. It's how I create better content for you moving forward. Well, as always, my name has been Paul C. This has been WP Tutson. Until next time, take care.